that was a really good intro to what I'm about to say. Because I was going to start by saying to you that this started for me about 10 years ago when I wrote my first book. And then I realised that would be a really big lie because it didn't. It started when I was a child, probably in the same way as it would have done for all of you. When we were children, we don't care where we're entertained or how we're entertained. We find fun wherever we can find it. When you're a child, even playing with bread on a plate is fun. And I think that's what we need to kind of root back into now. Stories are everywhere. And as children, we find them whenever we find them and however. If that's dismantling a mannequin in a shop window, that's the way to go. Um, I had signed a three-book deal in 2001 to write three romantic comedy stories. And with each one that I wrote, I really wished I could have had a CD or something to show um, the classical, hear the classical music that I was writing into the, the books, to see the pictures on the wall that I was explaining, to just like be part of the world. Um, but I couldn't. If I was writing it now, it would be very different. So when my books came out, this is what happened. No, not really. <laughs> when my books, that was a joke. When my books came out, um, one of the features in the story was the Tomatina Festival in Bunyol in Valencia. Um, which I happened upon by accident, actually. The character lived in Valencia, and then I found out about this festival. If I was writing that story now, there's so much more I could have done with that by using transmedia. I could have asked people that have been to the Valencia Festival at Bunyol to send me in their own video content. I could have found people that were going to the next one to shoot content for me. I could have arranged a meet-up around that. I could have even placed a fictitious character from my story in the middle of that festival to do something really nuts. Okay, There's loads I could have done with that. However, it was 2001, and that's like eons ago, so that just wasn't going to happen. Um, what I did do was went on to write, um, do an MA in creative writing and new media. And for my dissertation project, I wrote a story called Stay and Single, which was actually supposed to be my fourth novel. Um, but then I decided to upload it as a blog, which I thought would be really easy, you know, a chapter a day, just cut and paste, no problem. And Sophie Reagan was going to exist on Blogger. Um, I had additional content. I created a YouTube video channel where I asked readers to send in um, video content of chat-up lines, dating lines, how they'd been dumped, love stories, whatever they could send me that was relative to romance and being loved and loving. Um, I had loads of content and I still receive emails every week with new content for that. Um, Sophie was everywhere. I lived as Sophie for four months. Um, there was a rival magazine to the magazine that Sophie worked for that I'd made up called Giza magazine. Um, a reader actually said to me, give me some taglines for the magazine and I'll mock up a cover for you, because I didn't have any skills to do that. So I gave her the taglines and she came up with a fabulous cover with Marilyn Monroe on the front. Um, I had free business cards made of the story that I left everywhere. Um, in shoes, in the shops, at airports, in toilets, I left them cards everywhere. And I could see from where I'd left them, the traffic coming to the blog was from the locations that I'd left the cards, so I could see that it was working. Um, I was in Second Life. With a lot of help, I have to credit Christy Dina with that because I was so rubbish in Second Life. I was bumping into walls. I was flying. Christy <laughs> grounded me in Second Life and even made my avatar look cool because I looked really bad. Um, so I lived as Sophie for four months. With that meant that I had to field lots of really strange emails from men who thought Sophie was real, offering to marry her and take her away to Venice for a weekend. Lots of women who thought I'd hijacked their life story because they were called Sophie and they were trying to stay single for a year, which is what the story was. So by being Sophie, I actually had to handle the good and the bad part of that. So I'm saying really, step up now, dare to live. It's not about daring to live so much. I mean, David told us stories about people being killed, you know, on a global basis. It's not about daring to live, but it's daring to exist and daring to be. Um, when we're online, we can have multiple personalities. You might be an executive who's got a secret fetish for hip-hop that you don't want your people at work to know about. It might not suit with your image. However, you can go home and you can interact with people on social networks and create communities around things you like to do. So by daring to live, that is what you will do. Encourage your characters to live online and you yourself to live and exist online. I mean, you can even be the Queen online if you want to, you know. If you wanted to know about the Queen before, maybe you'd watch a documentary or read an autobiography on the Queen. Now you can just upload a picture and just be her. And you can say whatever you want her to say. And some of the stuff's really quite hilarious and very unqueenly as well. But this is a dare. Why is this a dare? This is a dare simply because you will lose control of your content. There's elements of that that people will mash up. By opening the channels, you're going to get people complaining, people giving their own ideas, telling you why you're wrong. 
And you have to be relevant. You have to be genuine. If you're daring to live and exist online, if you don't come across with relevance and being genuine, then you're going to alienate your readers or your audience or whoever that might be. So it is a dare because you will lose control of some of your content. But if you carefully plan what elements you put out as transmedia and what areas you moderate and not, you can control what you're going to lose control of. I just want to end with a quote from Sherry Turkle who from MIT who wrote a book called Life on the Screen. And she said, every era constructs its own metaphors for physical, sorry, for psychological well-being. But these stable social worlds have broken down. In our time, health is described in terms of fluidity rather than stability. What matters now is the ability to adapt and change to new jobs, new career directions, new gender roles and new technologies. So there's the slide which I forgot to show you. <laughs> and that's my ending shot. Dare to exist, dare to be, dare to live. Thank you very much. Thank you.